Hello, my name is Bruce Cranhoff, and I'm creating a screencast today on this paper, Distilling the Knowledge in a Neural Network. I think this is quite an important paper because it goes over how you can take, you know, your Kaggle comp competition or ImageNet winning ensemble of a bunch of big models and condense all that learning down into a single small model that's almost as good. Um, so that's what this paper goes over. It also goes over a novel ensemble of experts, um, which you could then distill. I won't be covering the second part. I'll just be focusing on the knowledge distillation. So what are the main ideas in this paper? Well, that first of all, you create your ensemble of big models to get the best possible predictions. Then you train a new, smaller distillation model to make the same predictions as this ensemble. This model is small enough to be put into production, so it's actually useful. Um, and you can also train this, you can train this on unlabeled data because you're you're just trying to match your original cumbersome model's predictions, right? So you can predict on unlabeled data and then you can train your distillation model on that. Um, yeah. So their novel contribution is to train the distillation model on softened, softened target probabilities by raising the temperature used in the softmax calculations. We'll go over to what that means in detail later. Um, what this does is it allows you to transfer more information per training example from the cumbersome to the distillation model uh, without transferring too much of the noise related with the very unlikely uh, classes. The, the class is a very low probability. Um, so ultimately, you can largely circumvent the trade-off between you know, size, large models, and big ensembles, and performance, where you want something that's actually decently fast in production, right? Um, so we can actually distill all that learning from these ensembles into something that's useful in production. So yeah. Kaggle competition winning entries could now be turned into actually useful production models in industry, right? Okay, why does this work well? Well, first of all, when you're training to match the output of another model, you don't need to worry about overfitting because your cumbersome model with all its ensembling and regularization, it has already dealt with the overfitting. And now you're just trying to match what it predicts. So that's great. Also, um, there's much more information when you're training on the, the soft target, which is the probability predicted by the cumbersome model. Um, there's much more information in that than there is in you know a single, it's this class, a single one hot encoded hard target. So let's, uh, let's illustrate this with an example. Here's an image. It's a dog, right? But you can see there's a bit of a cat in here. And in this example, our cumbersome model, it's picking up that there's a bit of cat in here by making this probability much larger than, say, the probability of predicting a fungus or a plant. So there's, there's information in kind of encapsulated in this probability, which has to do with there being a bit of cat or has to do with, you know, dogs have ears that look similar to cat ears, you know. Um, some of the learning inside the cumbersome model is encapsulated by these probabilities. So if we can make this information available at training time to our distillation model, then we will need fewer training examples to transfer that learning to the distillation model. So let's uh, consider what uh, soft targets to use uh, specifically in training the distillation model. Um, so the simplest thing would be to just use the probabilities, right? Um, now here's a depiction of the the head of a neural uh, a neural network. Uh, so here are the output probabilities. These are the numbers that are going into your softmax uh, to ultimately produce those probabilities. So the simplest thing is well. We can generate these probabilities using our, um, our cumbersome model 
and then we can train our distillation model to exactly match these probabilities, right? To reproduce these probabilities. And this should work. What is unfortunate about this approach is, I mean, there's only a 1% chance that we predict a cat here, right? Um, which means that, you know, we're only giving 1% of the weight to that information, which will make it much harder for our distillation model to to use that information, to learn that information. Um, so it'd be nice to transfer the, the that there's a bit of cattiness in this more effectively. Um, so we need fewer training examples to uh, to transfer this learning to the distillation model. So let's look at another option. Well, instead of matching these probabilities, maybe we should just match the numbers that are going in. And then, you know, we won't match them exactly, so then our loss can be the, uh, the squared error, right? The squared difference from these numbers that are going in. So that should work. Then we're training on the cat information just as much as on the dog information, but we're also training to predict negative 14 as well. Now, this negative 14 maybe isn't that important. Whether it's negative 14 or negative 12, what's important is that these are small numbers. These are small probabilities. The large cumbersome model, once it's figured out that, okay, the probability that this is a plant is very low, uh, it doesn't have much of an incentive in terms of the, the loss to, to get this number right. Whether this should be 10 to the minus 7 or 10 to the minus 6, um, there isn't a large there isn't a large derivative pushing to to get that probability exactly correct so this may be more a a feature of you know what happened in the training to get other probabilities that are more important correct that we get different numbers here right um so the fact that these are small is important the exact order of magnitude is maybe less important that's maybe more noise so this this will work training on these values but we're also fitting a bunch of noise which means that we'll probably need a larger distillation model to capture all the information you can imagine we might have realistically we might have a hundred or a thousand different classes here and so that's a lot of different numbers that we're, we're trying to match all of them so we might need a much larger distillation model, which is not the point. Um, yeah, and that noise might even be harmful, right, in making accurate predictions on what we really care about, which is that this is a dog and there's a bit of cattiness in it. So we want we want a happy medium, which is what this paper does by raising the temperature to five. So this looks like a soft max, right? It's almost the same, except we're dividing by a temperature here, which means we're basically, we're taking all these input numbers and we're dividing them in this example, we're dividing these by five, so they become much smaller. And then all these probabilities become much closer to being all equal. And so I actually used a bit of Python code to calculate the numbers and uh, here's what I got. Python code is not important, but so you can see at temperature five, the probability of it being a dog is now 67%. Probably being a cat is much higher, 27%, right? And then these probabilities are also higher, but they're still still fairly low. So we're not introducing too much noise by making these probabilities higher, but this 27% probability now that's something that we can really uh, we can really train on, right? So we will effectively transfer the, the cattiness information to our distilled model at this elevated temperature. Um, <clears throat> now this is just a trick for training, right? We modify the probabilities, we train our distillation model at this elevated temperature, but these aren't the real probabilities, right? So at prediction time, be sure to set the temperature back to one and then make your predictions with your distilled model, distillation model. <clears throat> Now, what, what temperature should we use? In this paper, they mostly use temperature 5. What I think is 
the temperature we use really depends on how much data we have. <coughs> we since since we're training on the predictions of another model, we can if we have lots of unlabeled data, we could use our cumbersome model, label all that unlabeled data, and then train our distillation model on that, right? So then we'd have tons of data. If we have tons of data, we don't need to transfer the most information for each training example, right? Um, so the, here I think, you know, a lower temperature might make sense. We can raise the temperature a little bit, but we don't want to raise it, raise it too much because as we raise the temperature, we're transferring more noise as well as more useful information. So just train it a little bit <clears throat> or just raise the temperature a little bit. However, if you're training the distillation model on the same small original training set, um, you want to capture and transfer as much information with each training example as possible. And so it would probably be useful to have a much higher um, temperature, uh, like the temperature five they use in the paper. So, so that's it. Um, so overall, a, a fairly simple but awesome idea for how to use all that learning from a complicated ensemble and package it into a much leaner model, which you can put into production and making all this ensembling actually useful for real world applications. Thank you for watching.